Hi folks, this is Kixi and for the first time you're watching Kixi's Brick Builds without subtitles. Okay guys, it's been less than 10 days for LEGO to launch the new express passenger train with the set number 60337. Of course, this means that the old passenger train set number 60197 will soon retire and that may be your last chance to get this train at a reasonable price. As we all know, prices go up after a very short time after a set has been taken off the market. I would like to take the opportunity to show you again the advantages and disadvantages of this set and what you can do with a set so it looks really cool. Back in 2018, LEGO released both a new passenger train and a freight train. Today we will focus on the passenger train. The set comes with the train itself, a track oval with 16 curves and 4 straights, 4 minifigures, a tiny, tiny platform, a signal and a few small parts. First we make a brief comparison between the old and the new passenger train. Both trains are built in the typical LEGO City style and I think they just look great next to each other. Since the new train consists of 87 parts more than the old one, it is of course also a little bigger. In particular, the wagons and the long nose of the control unit make the train much longer. With an additional car, the old passenger train would be only slightly longer than the new passenger train. One reason why many people didn't like the last passenger train so much was the molded part of the driver's cab. Although we have had molded parts for the driver's cabs in recent years, for some reason it was a very special problem with this train, but not for me to be honest. The only problem I have with molded parts is that I can't turn a 6 wide train into an 8 wide train. Of course I tried this with the 60197 anyway on the basis of the Thales model from stoneheap.com but I was never really happy with this attempt. The new passenger train, on the other hand, is much easier to modify in 8 wide because there are no molded parts. And in this case, it looks really good. Another reason why the train wasn't as popular as previous trains is that we always got a front and an end car on previous trains. For this train, people either had to buy an extra control unit on eBay, for example, or simply buy the set a second time to get a whole train. We also have this problem with the new express passenger train as I showed you in my video about this train. I keep reading comments asking why LEGO doesn't add an extra end car. Well, the answer is simple. LEGO wants us to buy the set twice, as this image from the official LEGO site confirms. Ok guys, it's subscription time. Please like and share this video and leave a sub. It doesn't take longer than this 8 second hint. When I bought this set in early 2020, I only saw the set as the basis for a much larger train. I got acquainted with Bricklink's Stud.io software and started modifying the train. Let's go into detail. First, the individual cars had to be significantly longer. So I extended the two control units at front and end by 10 studs each. In addition, I wanted to get rid of as many visible studs as possible and tiled the entire roof. Furthermore, I have indicated a door on the side. Maybe I have to revise it again and install a real door. It seems this project never comes to an end. I also moved the engine forward and on the sides I improved the trim line a bit and removed studs. I didn't like the original pantograph at all. So I removed this tiny thing and installed the pantograph that was already used on the Horizon Express. And now be honest, that looks much better. By extending the control units, I gained additional space. I used this to install real doors and even to create some space for passengers. At the moment I have installed this door handle on my model. Here too, there is still considerable potential for improvement. Here we see again the gain space for passengers. I tiled the floor and accommodated two brick built seats because I don't like the original Lego seats.
Here is a short animation to show you the entire control unit closed and open again. As many of you have probably already noticed, I have replaced the simple bogies with so-called Jacobs bogies. This means that two wagons share a bogey. In reality, this ensures a much smoother running of the wagons. I used the next 60 seconds to show you in a time lapse how I designed the Jacobs bogies with the Stud.io software from Bricklink. So sit back and listen to the music while watching. There is one thing I have forgotten so far. Some of you may have wondered why I got the train wheel holders in dark bluish grey. These are actually the only parts that are not from LEGO, but from an alternative manufacturer. You can also build the bogies with the black parts of LEGO. I just like dark bluish grey better. Next we take a look at the Bistro car. Like all other wagons, I have also extended this one. With an additional 20 studs, the wagon will be almost twice as long as the original. Again, I have installed two doors to open at the front and rear. I didn't change the interior in this case. I just tiled the floor again and continued the existing theme. And again a small animation to show you the entire bistro car closed and open in its impressive length. Next let's look at the passenger car. This has also grown in length by 20 studs as we want to stay in the same length. Of course I also used movable doors here. As with the control unit, I decided not to use the original LEGO seats, but the brick-built seats you already know. There would have been more space for seats, but I decided against it, because I might want to include something else here, something like a newspaper stand or a drinks vending machine. And then we have the observation car. This car also has movable doors. The biggest challenge with this wagon was to have enough space on both levels for the heads of the minifigures. It took many attempts to reach the right height, which also made the design look pleasant from the outside. By the way, all the stickers that can be seen were created for the digital model. On the real model, there are so far only the standard stickers that are delivered with the original set. For the observation car, I needed extra stickers to continue the cube pattern. For this, I rotated the stickers by 90 degrees and also cut them to the right size. And finally, we have the end car. Again, there are movable doors and I have provided additional space for passengers. Also in this end car, there is already room for another Bluetooth battery box from LEGO. The entire train moves much better if you use two battery boxes and two motors. And to make things round, here is the animation for the end car, closed and open. And finally, my extended version of the train in a 360 degree view. For those of you who are wondering how long it takes to make such animations, I can say, it feels like a never ending story every time. 
the 30 seconds for this view alone takes about 10 hours of rendering time. And now let's look at the real model. Some of you may already know the recordings from my previous video, because I didn't have the time to make new recordings. However, this time I used the better video material with higher resolution. So guys, if you liked the video, then subscribe to this channel and leave a like there. I also always look forward to many comments. So thanks for watching, see you next time, bye!